from not qualifying in the aims examination last year in the may to coming to the all india rank 15 this year in may inict this is also the best rank till date from uh, northeast india we couldn't believe it at first <laughs> i had to like check many times i hadn't imagined that uh, to get into aims delhi through unreserved category it is something beyond that... our imagination anatomy parna to kisi ko acha nahi lagta hai, but <laughs> <laughs> Rather than your uh, GT ranks, the, the way you actually feel while giving the test, certain level of integration is always necessary. Uh, of course, I'll mention uh, Deepti ma'am. Her notes were so helpful. Uh, yeah, like uh, the way she used to teach, she makes you think. Like, you know, even when you're writing your notes, you are thinking yeah. and analyzing stuff. Be kind to yourself and take True. some time I away. That is what pushes me, you know, to... Um, to do justice to this profession that I am in. AIMS Delhi is like, I, I think, every aspirant's dream. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Nishant, currently pursuing general medicine. Today with me is a special guest, Dr. Anvesha Saha. She is from uh, Gohati, Assam, and she has achieved an extraordinary rank uh, in the INICT examination, that is the Central Institute examinations, a uh, rank of just 15, 1 5. And uh, this is also the best rank till date from uh, Northeast India. And I'm so happy to learn about it. And uh, Anvesha, welcome to my channel and many, many congratulations. How was your feeling about this? And uh, how did you react when you first came to know about this rank? Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, first of all, for having me here. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. And uh, yes, uh, I'm very overwhelmed. Like, uh, I actually couldn't believe it at first. <laughs> I had to like check many times. And uh, my parents were there with me when we checked the result. And they were also like uh, ensuring again and again whether it's actually 15. <laughs> and... <laughs> And yeah, um, I'm very happy because uh, like actually it, it was, I hadn't imagined that uh, to get into AIMS Delhi through unreserved category, it is something beyond that, our imagination. Like, uh, true, so true. Like, yeah, I'm... It's, it's like a difficult, uh, it's a daring dream to have also because uh, I know uh, people are achieving it, but... Uh, Still, when we think about it, uh, suddenly we cannot like we uh, definitely we get scared when we dream of such a thing to get admission in Ames, New Delhi. Uh, so uh, right away, Anvesha, uh, starting like from not qualifying in the Ames examination last year in the May to coming to the All India Rank 15 this year in May INICT. So what was going in your mind in this one year? How did you strategize? What was your planning behind your preparation and your source? Like, how did you start your preparation? Right. Yeah. So, uh, to be very honest, uh, during my first attempt, I was not at all prepared. Uh, because, like, uh, throughout my MBBS days, I, uh, though I was attending the offline classes of DAMS here at Guwahati, but uh, I was not uh, preparing for MCQ exams per se. I was more focused on my professionals and I was doing a more of a subjective kind of a study throughout. Uh, I was reading textbooks and, uh, you know, uh, going about in a way, in, in an approach to uh, do well in the board exam, like the professional exams. That was what okay. I was focused on. And uh, I was preparing my notes uh, from the DAMS offline classes. Okay. And then internship happened. Even during internship, like uh, during some of the lighter postings, I used to just uh, prepare notes of the shorter subjects. Uh, okay. I was not studying per se because... Um, somehow i could not i could not manage time and also i thought that i want to give my full heart to my internship i want to learn and enjoy yeah the yeah, one enjoy year of my posting. internship yeah <laughs> so um after that i gave the may INICT in which uh, i did not qualify 
तो एक्चुअली माई मेन फोकस वॉज आई एन आई सी टी दो आई अपियर फॉर नीट इज वेल इन विच आई गॉट सम एटी फाइव के ऑड रैंक एंड दीज वर नॉट दीज डिड नॉट हैम्पर मी मच बिकॉज आई वॉज I knew that I was not preparing for these exams, so I just wanted sure. to get an experience of what these exams are like. Exams are. Yeah. And uh, right, yeah. And then, um, so I had at that point, like after appearing for uh, I N I C T and NEET twenty two twenty twenty two, I had a set of uh, notes which were not complete, but more or less. Uh, the subjects were done but okay. uh, there were subjects which i still needed to prepare like to prepare the yeah. notes i did not have the notes okay. so then i uh, made a mental map of how i would be going around uh, my preparation i made a list of the subjects uh, which i have not touched and i made a list okay. of the subjects which i am done with so accordingly okay. uh, i used uh, the app of dams the e medicos app and okay. from there uh, there were uh, recorded classes there Lectures, and yeah. i used to watch ha huh, i used to watch those videos and uh, complete my notes like here and there whatever topics i had missed and all that so this okay. process took me around till september to wrap okay. everything up and to you know to concise like uh, what is where from where i'm going to study what okay. and uh, i had also done some subjects from uh, maro because okay. uh, actually i had not attended those classes here In so the i and i yeah and yeah. i i had heard about faculties like rohan khandelwal sir for surgery yeah. and also yeah and uh, rebecca ma'am for biochemistry so these were subjects which i uh, did from uh, maro so after september my next target was the november inict and i knew that of course uh, one revision or two revisions was not going to get me anywhere but still i thought ki i'll give this exam properly with whatever preparation i have so then uh, i appeared in that one after september i did one round of revision and i gave the november in which i got a 2k rank and uh, that was actually my first uh, reality check basically that uh, how difficult it is because now i knew like i did yeah. not know back then what this ex- because yeah. uh, even so uh, 500 I... rank in uh, undeserved category i think will not uh, fetch you a good clinical seat so i think uh, but Exactly. You're, when you're preparing in the initial phase, and two thousand rank is also a boost that you are in the right part at least. Yeah, that is. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, like giving that exam itself gave me a confidence that yeah. the I'm in the right track, track, and if I work on this, I can improve. So uh, then we got the dates for NEET PG, uh, yeah. which was scheduled for March. So March. then, um, then I went. full on like head on and okay. <laughs> i decided ki no wasting time now i have to give full heart and soul so okay. um i started with my next round of revision okay. and till uh, neat i could do around i think uh, two proper revisions and okay. one like last minute uh, revision of 14 15 days like that okay and then after neat uh, in neat i got a 494 rank and wow. um, yeah and after that uh, there was a bit of a burnout as well because it had been Definitely. going on for a long time now uh, yeah 8 to 9 months yeah it's dif- that is the most difficult part i think uh, most of the students uh, when they score good in neat like 400 rank in neat also is a tremendous rank and like it's like you might get your dream branch in a good college in india yeah. but to push yeah, yourself yeah. to go for this may i n i c t this is definitely uh, after the burnout also this definitely needs a yeah. hell lot of motivation and you have done it <laughs> and the result is here in front of us so yeah yeah so that is what i did so after neat i did another round of revision and uh, last uh, 15 days revision again Okay. And then I appeared, and here I am. 
<laughs> that's real nice i just want to ask like when did you uh, first thing when did you join dams like was it uh, in the third year or second year or was it in the internship thing and uh, for the marrow when you uh, like you said surgery and uh, biochemistry you did from there so you made your own notes or did you use their pdfs okay uh, so firstly i joined dams uh, in my second year okay and yeah i was attending classes here and uh, i was just preparing my notes i okay. was not actually studying like i was not revising the notes i just prepared the notes and that to not of all subjects selected subjects which uh, mainly the short subjects and uh, pre clinical subjects those were the subjects that i had attended okay. and um, as for marrow like uh, i did not um, i did not make my own notes for okay. surgery and biochemistry i use the printed notes that they okay. provide yeah that is good because uh, the making the notes from marrow it's already washed and sometimes it might take a lot of time so smart way is the more uh, preferable true yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, like this was when you were preparing your notes along with the professionals but uh, like when you were preparing exactly for the neat pg or the ini city that one year so were you uh, concising your notes in a way like uh, in a any se- separate copy or were you just adding on points on the uh, same copies where you made your notes like where, uh, what was your approach regarding the notes and also question banks were you solving the mcqs before also or you just started during this year only okay so uh, firstly regarding concising my notes uh, initially when i started preparing i used to read uh, like everything that is from cover to cover i okay. did not leave anything like in my first one or two revisions and yeah. after that while solving previous year questions i used to like mark those points uh, which have been asked previously so okay. i did not make any separate copy like in uh, the copy that i had uh, i used to just uh, you know like make a box or put some stars and like it was my way of just knowing that okay. this thing is important I, and i need to read it again and again true, so true. rather than preparing a separate copy which i know i will not actually be reading again so <laughs> it's better like i know that i'll be coming back to my notes so it's it was a better idea to just point make those points there and even for some very vast topics like as in stagings and everything uh, yeah. like which are you know usually presented in a very vast way but uh, if you can just uh, make a little box on the side and just note down that uh, this is where the thing changes this point in this classification is important this has been asked so that is what i used to do i used to make a separate column and write it there so i think that's a better idea while yeah. you're making your notes just leave some space where you can add things later okay and uh, regarding solving questions um, yeah. actually initially when i started I did not have much idea regarding how to solve questions and all those I was just randomly solving Q banks but okay. uh, then actually after uh, referring to some um, you know online resources and after listening to some guides and mentors yeah. I realized that uh, you know blindly doing the Q bank is actually not of much help so True. i started focusing only on the previous year questions questions that have been asked so okay. uh, every day i tried to uh, set aside an hour or two for solving okay. questions and which were primarily the previous year questions like repeatedly solving the previous year questions okay. and actually uh, it sounds easy but actually you know you will not be able to complete solving the past 5 years questions also true, like true. because if you, it's huge it, yeah yeah it's huge you know sunne mein aisa lagta hai ki are previous year yeah. question kitna hai aur matlab we will be able yeah. to do it but it's not like that ha kari lenge nahi hai actually it takes Haan. time so Thank even towards the end of my preparation when i went through the marrow the um, previous year question section i realized there were things that i hadn't solved earlier while i was thinking i've solved everything so that is how it is so i think that's very important 
and yeah so from the question banks i used to bookmark questions and also they okay. have this uh, mcq id which uh, yeah, yeah. i used to ha huh, i used to just add it to my uh, notes that you okay. know while reading this topic just go to that question again and go through that explanation once so that was another way in which i linked okay. my notes and the questions yeah wow, means like think your notes are gold that means because uh, as you said <laughs> you were preparing it so well you made it into uh, like markers you used you made uh, you used even the tables and also the mcq id yeah. so i think the yeah. that is very important uh, w- what our teachers or what our guides always say that make your notes so that you don't have to visit the main primary big source you just have to keep visiting your notes again and again so this is really uh, inspiring okay. for all the aspirants like notes you should if you are preparing it prepare it in the best way possible this is uh, yeah. lovely and uh, question bank you mainly oh. used maro itself i think yeah yeah i used question bank and test series of uh, maro entirely okay. okay so coming to test series like grand test uh, uh, of course you might be giving so you started from early on or uh, and also can you tell me the last rank you scored in uh, the, your grand test last grand test okay yeah i uh, started early but uh, okay. those were not very significant like i was just appearing for those not uh, i was not looking at my ranks i was not looking at anything i w- just wanted to practice like uh, grand test and those were uh, like uh, i don't know 8k 9k <laughs> sort of ranks i used to get okay. like initially so, when i started okay. and that did not disappoint me because i had not even started like properly so that yeah. was and i used to give uh, later on i started giving the tests when they were live Okay. and uh, i used to give it on a sunday and on the monday i used to review them like when the results were announced okay and as for the last um gt that i had given was uh, the ini mock of yeah, um yeah. before the ini maro yeah ha yeah. huh. and in that uh, i think i had a rank of around 211 okay and that was <laughs> that was uh, some one and a half months before the exam and yeah, yeah so after that i improved maybe <laughs> yeah so i really love this because uh, before uh, like grand test scores shouldn't affect the preparation and the mindset also because uh, many of us get disappointed with the grand uh, grand test scores but right but that should not demotivate us because see if you even if you see your last rank this is the reason why i asked it was 211 and uh, the jump from uh, 2000 in november to 215 so you should always keep believing in yourself and like keep solving you never know how it exam day is always it might turn out to be something different exactly exactly and i think uh, rather than your uh, gt ranks i think it should be your the the way you actually feel while giving the test because so i important. used to feel that for myself like there were mm-hmm. some, some tests during which i was happy with the way i performed like the way i was being able to recall stuff and there were other tests in which maybe i got a good rank or a good score but, but i knew yeah. that uh, you know i was guess i was doing more of guess work and mm. i was not being able to recall things so that is what is more important i think True. the self analysis should be more rather than what uh, rank you're getting or what percentile you're getting so so yeah that is uh, so important and good advice because uh, this grand tests are designed to make you feel and give the experience of the exam that's why giving it uh, exactly. dedicatedly is also important that's so uh, lovely uh, regarding the revisions anvesha like uh, did you integrate and study like the basic sciences with the clinical subjects or uh, like you just uh, picked one subject completed that and moved on to another subject yeah actually uh i planned my revision in such a way that i would do one subject and then the next i did not bring in other subjects but okay. i'll tell you this uh, like uh, while i was preparing suppose uh, i'm doing medicine uh, mm-hmm. suppose i'm doing cvs of medicine then yeah. most of the time like if you walk into my room you'll see my entire table has different <laughs> copies open so okay <laughs> even though in my schedule i don't integrate 
but when you are reading something with full concentration and you're trying to clear your concepts you will eventually end up referring to other subjects other you texts. will have to open pharmacology once you have to open physiology once so yeah. i think uh, even though my schedule did not have that ki today i will integrate medicine with physiology it it was like medicine from this to this physiology from this to this but yeah. uh, my advice would be that whenever you get stuck in something whenever mm. like i'll give you an example which ha- used to happen to me every time like whenever i was reading cvs i would always open my physiology notes to refer to say heart sounds cardiac cycle mm. and everything which i have done properly in physio okay. and you know i need to recall Just that to, to the understand hum. the medicine the medicine part yeah. better so a certain level of integration is always necessary and i think it is a personal choice whether you want to put it into your schedule or you want to divide it that is a personal choice true and i think uh, 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 maybe uh, passively but you were integrating in a way so uh, integration is exactly. will be the key in the in future as well because is you cannot key. study the yeah. medicine just uh, separately you have to uh, somewhere or the other the knowledge will come true yes so uh, your favorite teachers like from dams and mero anyone you want to mention Uh, i think uh, dams has a really uh, good faculty because um, they have uh, the faculty in dams has been able to uh, you know put the entire 19 subject syllabus in such a concise manner during the regular yeah. classes like really i'm so thankful to them and mm-hmm. uh, of course i'll mention uh, deepthi ma'am because uh, OBG was one of my stronger subjects and her notes were so helpful uh, yeah, like uh, the way she used to teach you know uh, yes. she used to mm-hmm. teach in a way that uh, like in her life classes she used to she makes you think like you know even when you're writing your notes you are thinking yeah. and analyzing stuff so deepthi ma'am was one of my favorites and okay. arvind sir for medicine he yeah, uh, is just you too know, good he is <laughs> Yeah, his yeah. Uh, ECG notes are like you know I always Gold. used to think he. <laughs> I lovely, was like lovely. ECG तो मुझसे ना हो पाया. But he made me. <laughs> I think in in, in every yeah otherwise. every doctor like once they become a doctor in internship the ECG is the most uh, you know <laughs> we fear. Scary. And, <laughs> scary and that is also the most uh, important thing where you can make a diagnosis. So uh, the approach exactly yeah. the approach which arvin sir taught i think uh, that really helped me also and it is still helping me in uh, pursuing medicine also this lovely exactly arvin sir is good yeah and uh, from yeah. mero any and rohan sir yeah mero as i mentioned uh, rohan sir's classes were very helpful and also okay. rebecca ma'am i think the way she teaches biochemistry is uh, like you know she simplifies uh, yeah. stuff to such an extent that yeah because biochemistry is a subject uh, you know if you're not taught properly khud se karna becomes very you know cumbersome and, so i and think you cannot cram biochemistry helpful. yeah you cannot cram biochemistry exactly, and exactly. the way the it, it is it is like more of a um, you have to memorize but the way ma'am has taught i think she has uh, made the uh, easy to memorize it also so easy easy exactly exactly yeah true so anvisha besides uh, studies like uh, what are your hobbies how do you plan your distractions and like how you maintain your sanity because of course you were slogging long hours for your studies and getting this rank you have to study but of course you might be finding some time to you know escape the mundane routine so what are your hobbies mundane routine yeah so um i like to read like uh, okay. you know i like to read novels and uh, fiction non fiction so whenever okay. i used to get some free time i would uh, read something i not new books but then things that i've read earlier just go through those and okay. listen i used to listen to music and sometimes watch netflix and yeah that's <laughs> how i used to relax and yeah, yeah. 
and i think it's very important like as you mentioned uh, you know because this is such a stressful time and um, you know even a minute you spend away from your books uh, you feel like you're wasting time but it's actually not that so i think that is another advice that i would want to give everyone that you know like be kind to yourself and take True. some time away and i also used to talk to my mother a lot like whenever okay <laughs> whenever things got uh, <laughs> overwhelming i used to just rush to her and you know spend yeah. some time talking to her which also de-stressed me a lot so i think you know have someone in your life with whom you can talk and you know share your feelings i think that is also very important that is uh, so important and uh, you have to find something to keep your soul alive also besides the mundane routine True. so this is that is so important True. about inspiration who is your biggest inspiration in life like what inspires you the most my biggest inspiration again like i would say my parents uh, both okay. of them happen to be doctors my father okay, is a wow. pediatrician yeah okay. and my mother is a gynecologist okay. and um, you know i have uh, i have i have seen their lives i have seen how hard they work and how so, honestly they work and i think that is what pushes me you know to uh, to do justice to this profession that i am in and definitely. yeah and also i think you know uh, my mother is a person who has you know given me a lot of strength through this period like there were a okay. lot of you know you know there are a lot of ups and, and downs lot of and things and in la- last 2 3 years happening. when it yeah in general tough for the whole world also. in general so, exactly yeah, exactly exactly definitely. so and so with, doc- she with doctors has at been, home yeah and when their parents are working you also might be a little bit worried here and there because of course covid exactly. was there but besides that it's very important to you can if you can in, uh, derive inspiration from them and like keep uh, focused on your studies so that is definitely yeah exactly regarding uh, like since you have got a wonderful rank of 15 and uh, i hope you get the dream branch whichever college you want i think at this rank you'll get admission at the best institute of the country that is aims new <laughs> delhi so uh, what is your dream branch which branch you prefer to be make your career in yeah right uh, as you said that yeah like aims delhi is like i i think every aspirant's dream dream and college so yeah. i hope i can <laughs> so i hope i can like uh, manage a seat there and okay. also uh, i'm interested in medicinal branches like uh, okay. general medicine pediatric medicine and okay. like uh, my non negotiable factor is that i do not want to go for surgical branches so okay <laughs> accordingly i'll be choosing and yeah i hope in either of these two i will be able to manage a seat i wish you all the luck because uh, i think uh, pursuing any medicine allied subject from the apex institute i think it's the best and uh, i hope you get the dream branch and whatever you take be it medicine be it pediatrics welcome uh, to the field of medicine <laughs> and uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, lastly anvesha uh, like a f- message to the future aspirants who are watching this uh, how would you like to conclude and uh, also keeping in mind the next examination which is coming uh, since aims will be the conducting body of this exam and you have cleared this aims exam Uh, with flying colors so i think uh, what is your take on this next exam because they have already laid down a, a notice where they are mm. mentioning about the integration like the basic subjects with the clinical subjects so what is your take on right. next and what message you want to give to aspirants yeah uh, as far as uh, i know about the upcoming pattern of exams i feel that uh, more stress is being laid to basic concepts like you know in understanding every subject and every topic ho- in a wholesome manner and uh, which has been the theme of uh, the INICT exam that was happening for these years and as i always uh, say that uh, the pre clinical and para clinical subjects as the first 
and second prof subjects which we have known mm-hmm. till now these yeah. are subjects that you know actually take you to the depth of medical science and True. you know where everything arises from like where everything originates from so i think uh, to all future aspirants who will be starting preparing from now on uh, yeah clinical subjects need to be strong clinical acumen needs to be strong but i think m- equal focus should be given to the pre and para clinical subjects to the basic sciences and of okay. course it's uh, you know easier said than done but because you yeah. know anatomy padhna to kisi ko acha nahi lagta hai but nahi <laughs> lagta <laughs> but that is so important when you approach surgery and orthopedics yeah. true exactly so maybe you know maybe it's actually you know a blessing in disguise because now you will be able to you know now anatomy won't appear you know boring or uh, you know meaningless exactly. why am i reading all this maybe it will you know start making more sense so i think so, it, it might be a good initiative you know to integrate stuff and to change the pattern of learning a bit so that is my advice like uh, equal attention to basic sciences as well as clinical subjects and uh, making things concise which is another thing that i always focus on like like i already told you uh, yeah. that uh, you know even when you are preparing your notes even in the textbook that you are reading wherever it is like or if you have a separate copy just try to make things concise and even though i was the old school kind of person but i think now with you know technology it has become easier like you can yeah. uh, make a pdf maybe of the stuff that you want to revise in the last minute True. so i think that is also very important like uh, because it's a huge syllabus and it is definitely a daunting task to be able to revise the stuff in the last 15 days or the last 20 days so uh try concising stuff and try paying equal attention to basic sciences and clinical stuff that is my advice that's a lovely message and i think uh, you have laid it out very uh, clearly how one should approach next and uh, your last take on like uh, considering the fact that everyone now knows the source the strategy also and like question bank and everything they know how to go about but the main challenge comes when uh, there is you know distraction it's like uh, to stay focused stay consistent and you know attention span is getting so much affected nowadays so any tips you want to give to the aspirants to stay on track first thing and like uh, how you manage to eliminate distractions so this would be of much help to the aspirants right yeah i think uh, what you said is very important that uh, we are being bombarded with a lot of sources like some new app comes up some new coaching comes up and i think it becomes very difficult to you know judge uh, which is best for us so i think uh, like i told you that it took me nearly 2 to 3 months to make a map of to concise everything and to make a map of which subject i want to do from where and which i have already done and so that takes time like uh, y- you can you know uh, talk to seniors or you know watch some videos on youtube baby and figure out ki what you can afford which faculty will be good for you and how you want to manage your time whether you want to make your own notes or you want to go for uh, you know pre made uh, notes so considering everything give it time and uh, you know customize your uh, sources in in a way that suits you okay and after that suppose uh, you have decided on doing uh, say medicine from dams and if you are confident that you have done everything and your concepts are clear and you are being able to solve questions more or less then just do not shift like you know do not go go helter skelter looking for some other source for something that you have already done so have sure. faith in whichever source you are using i think that is uh, very important and also um, as far as attention span is considered i think that uh, like it's also very important towards the end to stay a bit away from yeah. social media definitely i i i firmly believe in that and that would be another advice that i would like to give you know because there are a lot of distractions there are many uh, you know as much as it is helpful at the same time you know it can hamper your preparation as well So, so for me i tried to stay away from social media 
towards the later part of my preparation so i think that is also a way of you know not being deviated uh, so you used to sit for long hours or you did you fo- uh, use this pomodoro technique or like one hour then 10 minutes break like how you used to pull the hours yeah yeah actually uh, i used to uh, i became a morning person to, okay. during my preparation days which i was not initially <laughs> but uh, i realized that you know uh, it's of course a personal choice but uh, if if like i think a certain part of the day you should choose ki this is my high productivity mm-hmm. time so during that time put in the hours okay. that is what i did like i utilized the morning hours mm-hmm. as much as i could and uh, i used to uh, sit at a stretch for uh, say around 2 uh, to 3 hours then take a break again 1 hour take a break 1 hour like that okay. and uh, it used to vary and then of course like a uh, human brain human yeah, capacity yeah. you cannot put in the same amount of effort throughout the throughout day, the day. so of course uh, you get tired and all that so again as i said be kind to yourself make your <laughs> schedule flexible and uh, bring in some changes maybe you know if uh, for for some days if you're studying in the morning then maybe for the next few days you can study more during the evening so you can mix and match to make sure. things interesting okay so basic idea is to have a good plan take time to plan and yeah. have a very yeah great clarity like of course because uh, it you should be very clear where you should be studying from and that is the main key i think okay thank you so much anvesha i think uh, the way you have you know summarized everything regarding your efforts your strategy and how the plan should be how one should approach i think it was lovely talking to you and i'm very happy that you uh, came and joined uh, this chat and uh, once again many many congratulations for this amazing feat and uh, wish you all the best thank you wish you all the best you, you i wish you get the dream branch and in the best institute of the country thank Keep, you so much yeah. thank you for having me it was really nice talking to you